Welcome into Two Foreign Drafts. Austin Gale here with Mike Renner. We are back from Mobile here in Cincinnati. I kind of miss Mobile, though. They had some good food down there. I was kind the of surprised. The food was good. I do miss the food. I miss. Uh, I, I don't miss being hungover every day uh, <laughs> and trying to pick my life back up together at 9 a.m. But, uh, yeah, the rest of it was fun. Those radio hits, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., those I were... Did, dude, I did an absurd amount of radio hits. <laughs> I, I was doing, I think I did, I averaged over 10 a day, something mm-hmm. like that. That might be an exaggeration, but I did a lot. Uh, and I would just I would just get a call, and I just assumed it was a radio hit. If it, I, my mom <laughs> calls, like, hey, yeah, it's Mike Ryan PFF, and they'd be like, mom. Give me, give me your best non-football, non-draft-related story from Mobile. Oh, I don't know if we could tell them all. <laughs> the one, one was, you could tell. It was seeing, uh, going up to Todd McShay and asking him what he thought of Josh Jones oh, man. this week that was uh, at 2 a.m., and he mm-hmm. said, are we really going to do this? And I said, no, it's all right. We don't have to do this. I think my favorite was I went into the night. You know, I'm going to drink heavy. I'm not getting the food truck outside. I promise myself <laughs> I'm not getting the food truck outside. Wake the up the next out. morning. Oh, my gosh. I had the food truck from outside. That was uh, regret. A I lot of regret. No one's ever woken up at, after drinking and been like, damn, I, well, I should have gotten that food truck outside. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's dive into the Senior Bowl. Um, you really recently, you know, PFF recently released their top big board, a big board update after the Senior Bowl. And there were some significant movers, guys that were in the mm-hmm. Senior Bowl practices and in the game. That moved up. Let's start with Josh Jones. Todd McShay outside the top 200. <laughs> for, for us, he's moved from 18 all the way up yes. to um, 16. 16, which is, I mean, best offensive lineman there, hands down, had a very good rep as a run blocker and pass blocker. Really good week for him. Yeah, and it was one of those things where it's like we thought he was going to be good. Like, mm-hmm. like I figured some seeing his tape and what he did against the edge rushing slate that he went up against, how dominant he was, it just I figured he would be pretty good at have a good week at the Senior Bowl, but he still needed to see it because mm-hmm. – he had not faced any caliber of edge rushers worth a darn so far this season. Goes there, highest win rate of any tackle in the one-on-ones, excuses himself extremely well, has some, has some high-level reps, too, yeah. in terms of, you know, he had a pancake on Zach Bond, had a pancake in the one-on-ones against Allen Robinson in pass protection drills, which you don't see a lot of pancakes <laughs> in the pass pro drills ever. So, dominant week for him, easily the top tackle there. I think he solidified himself. Well, in our eyes, is a first-round type of pick, and I think he ends up going there when it's all said and done for NFL evaluators because I think he had a more impressive senior bowl than a guy like Tyus Howard mm-hmm. did last year. We saw how high he moved up boards after a senior bowl performance. Yeah, and Josh Jones, too, when he got kicked into guard and the UNC product, mm-hmm. Jason Strobridge came in, he flat back that guy, too. I mean, he had some... Very impressive reps yeah. in Mobile, well worth moving up the spots he did. Let's also talk about another offensive lineman. This is a guy I was in love with. I mean, you were in love with before he got there. You had yeah, him at number shot. Yeah, you had the number you had him at number thirty nine on the big board before the senior bowl. We get there, Jonah Jackson of Ohio State. Guys built with like a mini fridge under his shoulder pads up top. Low small lower half, yeah. but huge I'm upper half. And his balance is fantastic. He had such a good week in pass protection. I was very, very impressed. Yeah, it reminds me a lot the build of like a Josh Sitton where it's like that doesn't look at like that doesn't like you see his build compared to Damian Lewis's build. Damian Lewis is built like a guard's supposed to be built. He's built like a Lego Jonah block. Jackson is just, like yeah, Jonah Jackson just has like weight some places that you know it's not supposed to be, but it doesn't really matter because his hands are the best hands of any guard in this class in terms of pass protection. So quick to replace him. He was so good in those one on ones. Didn't have any. He just never loses cleanly. If that he loses, short set he's is kind beautiful. Of, oh yeah, he gets on guys so quickly, and then when he does lose, he's still fighting. He's still hanging on to guys in pass pro. So uh, to me, easily the best week of any offensive lineman there in terms of pass protection. That's why he moves up our board a little bit to number 35. Him, Natani Muti, the Fresno State offensive guard that we've been high on all year, right there in the conversation for the top guard on our board. Man, Jonah, it, what, what a fantastic week for him. Let's stay on the offensive line. He brought up Damian Lewis, the LSU yeah. guard. We comped him a little bit while we were down in Mobile to Gabe Jackson, the former Mississippi State product that now plays for the Oakland Raiders. Easy. He's just, Easy he's, he was, you said it, and I think this is a perfect quote, he was built to be 330 pounds. Yeah. He was born to be this weight because the dude just owns his frame as a classic phone booth type of guy that mm-hmm. moving laterally, you don't love it, but yeah. you're not bull rushing this kid. And I think exactly. people brought it up, I, I was raving about about Damian Lewis. I went back and watched a lot of his tape at LSU after an outstanding Senior Bowl week, and people were saying Derek Brown beat him down. Derek Brown beat him down. There was one rep where Damian Lewis got beat pretty bad by Dame, uh, Derek Brown, but dude, the rest of that game, it, it was a good matchup. Like Damian yeah. Lewis held his own a lot of that game. And when you're as strong as Lewis is at the guard position, you don't really have to worry about the bull rush. And yes, he did get that one against mm-hmm. Derek Brown, but that's Derek Brown's about as strong a defensive lineman as you're going to see in college mm-hmm. football. And so when you're as strong as him, you don't have to worry about the bull rush. So you don't have to be Answer. You don't have to go for that kill shot right away. You don't have to deaden the guy before he gets to you. And so he can make up for some of those sort of athletic limitations. Yep. Not the quickest, not the most fleet of foot, but he can make up for that because he can be patient and wait you out until you make your move. And I think we saw that at the Senior Bowl where even guys with some quicks 
on the interior weren't really getting past him in the blink of an eye. He's very much uh, built to be a guard at the next level. Uh, he had that rep against Jafari Zuniga, speaking of which, did not have a great week. Neither of the Florida yeah. edge defenders, Zuniga and Grenard, had good weeks, but Zuniga kicked inside. Dude mm-hmm. just stuffs him on his back. Damian Lewis, a very strong, ox-like yeah. guard in at the Senior Bowl. All right, moving forward here, let's go Marlon Davidson. Came out on the first day of practices wearing short shorts. I'm like, who is this guy? I remember mm-hmm. Marlon Davidson as this edge defender. They kick him inside. He goes against guards and centers on the first day of practices at the Senior Bowl and beat some people down. He looked very good against John Simpson, the Clemson guard. He also had a, a, another handful of good reps. Mm-hmm. I was really impressed with what Marlon Davidson d- did in, at the Senior Bowl. And he was talked about as this like fringe first rounder, and I wasn't on it. I was like, dude, as an edge defender, there's no way. But when he got kicked inside, bulked up to 297 at the weigh-ins, I was like, okay, I'm ready to buy in. Yeah, I don't hate it. One of the biggest movers, uh, him and a guy we'll get to in a little bit, Denzel Mims, were the guys who moved the most spots up our draft board after the performance at the Senior Bowl. And because you mentioned he, he looked like a tweener on tape, comes in here, and is very much not a tweener. He is just very much built like a three technique, moves about the same speed, same quickness we saw from him at the edge at Auburn. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, this guy who uh, looked out of position and couldn't really, like, who you thought, you know, if he comes in at 275 and tries to play an edge, I just didn't think it was going to be good. But he came in, you know, 297 right at three technique, and it was just, you know, demolishing dudes on the interior. The most impressive guy after Javon Kinlaw there in terms of just, you know, size, speed, athleticism, and the way he won there at the Senior Bowl. Obviously, only played a game, uh, practice and a half, so not a full week of practice, but I think he showed more than enough to where I can get on board with him. If you're going to draft him in the first round, I'm not going to argue too hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has that skill set to be a difference maker on the and, interior. And he wore the 297 pounds well. It wasn't yeah. bad weight. No, didn't yeah, just didn't pack look, on a bunch of fat. Like He was look actually different. looking pretty yeah. pretty, uh, pretty muscled up, so he, lo- he looked good there. He didn't practice the rest of the week, though. Mm-hmm. Tweaked something or injury later, or maybe it was just like, hey, I'm so Thank dominant yeah. here. I don't know if I need to do this, but uh, that first day was enough mm-hmm. for him to move up quite a bit. Now let's go, let's go ahead and go to Denzel Mims. I think he's the biggest mover after the Senior Bowl. I think you went in. He's explosive of dude, athletics, got some good ball skills, but I need to see him run a full route tree at Baylor. He wasn't asked to do a ton of things. He ran a ton of different routes at the Senior Bowl in those practices and dominated one of the best one-on-one yeah. receivers there. Yeah, and the biggest thing to me was his physicality. The, the way he yes. ran his routes uh, was very translatable to the next level. Yes, he, he probably had some flags for OPI. And, and, <laughs> the bassy and, one and where he just throws yeah. <laughs> And I think I mentioned, though, last week, it's like I'd rather be able to tone a guy down then try to scale him up. They try to get him more physical because you don't, you can't do that with a lot of you know smaller wide receivers. You're not going to be able to teach them to be physical along their routes. Denzel Mims just has it. He wants to play physical football. Uh, you, you can't teach a guy that sort of mindset. And so he looked far more impressed, far more impressive on a far bigger route tree than he ran at Baylor. Far more diverse uh, in what he was doing there. Still maintained that explosiveness through his cuts. Still showed all that, uh, uh, all those ball skills that he's been known for and those, you know, jump balls, those circus catches throughout his career at Baylor. I think we saw all of that on tape. So to me, uh, just proving that he could do it is very impressive. And probably he looked like the best wide receiver there this week and obviously moved up to the top spot of any of the wide receivers there on our board. I mean, explosive, physical, and I love the way he uses his hands. Like down the route, he uses his hands well to create separation late in the catch point. I think that was very impressive for me. I think I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that move for Denzel yeah. Mims. Let's go to another receiver, guy that was just carving up highlight reels. He, I mean, he was fantastic day one, day two. Mm-hmm. He, K.J. Hill of Ohio State, I think weighed in around six foot. Destin maybe for a slot role, but I mean, after this week, he could play outside. Like I'm not scared of playing this guy outside because he beat press coverage mm-hmm. all week long. Yeah. Really impressive route runner, K.J. Hill. To me, the comp KJ Hill is Cooper Cup. Very, oh, wow. very similar player in terms of Cooper Cup, a little bigger, uh, but KJ Hill, uh, very much the same. Just the things that make a good wide receiver, mm-hmm. they do extremely well. Uh, you know, the things that make a good highlight reel in terms of, you know, uh, jump, being able to jump high, being fast on the football field, being that sort of straight line explosiveness, they don't necessarily do well. But getting off the line of scrimmage, setting up defensive backs, you know, attacking their leverage, and then attacking the football in the air, the most impressive thing to me was there was uh, two different routes I'll yeah. bring up. One was an out route where uh, he feels the cornerback on him, and so instead of k- taking it straight out towards the sidelines, it was probably a five-yard out, taking it straight out towards the sidelines, he comes back at an angle towards the football. And the other one was a hitch where instead of just hitching up and then seeing the ball come back to him, he got he came five yards all the way back to the quarterback to make sure that he was going to catch that hitch and that the cornerback behind him wasn't going to play him at the catch point. And so those two things are just some things that 
some receivers do and some receivers just do naturally that you can't necessarily teach a guy, hey, on this hitch, you got you to take this correct angle back to the football. Not a lot of guys have that. K.J. Hill does. And so if I were to put a, you know, sort of, uh, I'm not sure he's going to do the most valuable things for you at the next level in terms of, like we said, separate down the football field. That's still a question mark. But those natural receiving things that he does extremely well, I, I would bank on him being a very good receiver, whatever kind of role it is for mm -hmm. him at the next level. I think we really have to tip our cap to Brian Hartline, the Ohio State wide yeah. receivers coach, because he's done some good things with Terry McLaurin. I don't even think Austin Mack looked that bad. I mean, yeah, he wasn't yeah. a guy that rose significantly, but I was impressed he looked with like how he, he, yeah, he yeah, looked yeah, like yeah. he belonged. And then obviously K.J. Hill. I mean, Brian Hartline was tweeting out clips of K.J. Hill at Ohio State practices all week long, showing that this guy does it every week. Yeah. And yeah, um, I was talking to someone about K.J. Hill. He said they rep against press every week. So yeah. KJ Hill, yeah, I watched all of his receptions five plus yards down the football field. Didn't see press once this year, but he yeah, yeah. does it all practice long, and that showed at and the that was Senior the question Bowl. Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. That was like one of the biggest question marks we needed to see answered from him. We were super high on him heading into this season. He was actually in our top fifty mm -hmm. heading into this season, and I thought you know a top fifty guy should be featured more in that offense with all they lost at receiver. Wasn't I thought it maybe was an indication of him and how the coaches viewed his talent, but no, it's really just. You know, they keep reloading at Ohio State. Yeah, yeah there's so much <laughs> talent at Ohio State. K.J. Hill, a fantastic watch. Definitely go back and watch the Senior Bowl tape there because K.J. Hill looked very good in that one. Let's go to Devon Hamilton. Yeah, another guy, yeah. another Ohio State guy that's played really Three well Ohio this week. Ohio State guys on this <laughs> list. They, they, they did it, yeah. Devon Hamilton, give it yeah, to me. So he nose tackle, 330. And then he. the reason I was a little low on him at Ohio State is that you just you see him fresh all the mm -hmm. time. It's like you, you see his best – you don't get to see, only played something like 300 snaps this past year. So he was just in this heavy rotation. Uh, and you always just worry about guys who are at that weight uh, playing in heavy rotation. But during the practices this week, uh, was probably the best bull rushing nose tackle. Took pretty much any, any center he faced, put him back into quarterback's laps. Uh, had the highest pass rushing win rate of any guy in attendance this week. Had the highest pass rushing grade of any guy in attendance this week. Wow. So he did the damn thing here, moved into our top 100 after his performance. Looking at his grades from this past year, I mean, he had only played 354 snaps, you know, 82.3 overall grade, and a 75.5 PFF pass rush grade. I will say this, him going against Nick Harris, which we'll bring up later, was a mismatch. This dude's just too big, too yes. strong. That guy just bullies kids mm -hmm. that are smaller, smaller centers or smaller interior offensive linemen. Uh, two more guys left here on the risers, guys that have made moves with this past week, Van Jefferson. I mean, I watched this tape from Florida. I didn't, you know, it was there was inconsistency in his ability to separate, but there are a handful of times, like in the second half against LSU, the, fr the first drive of the third quarter, they throw to him, I think, four or five times in a row. He sets up a slant with a couple back shoulders, looks very good, but it's inconsistent. At the Senior Bowl, this guy was nothing but consistent. Very good separator, advanced route runner. You know, he had, like, similar to KJ Hill, and he understands how to attack cornerbacks' leverages. He broke the top 100 with his performance this past week. Yeah, and now he is the wide receiver. His dad is the wide receiver coach at New York Jets. So his dad <laughs> is a former wide receiver. Like, your dad being a wide receiver coach, he does those wide receiver things that we're talking about with K.J. Hill, setting up defensive backs. He had a, uh, a go, or he sold a go route by skipping in the middle of his route, accelerating, mm -hmm. stopping on a dime. Like his ability to stop on a dime uh, and set up defensive backs is very good. Like I still worry about him against more physical press coverage. The mm -hmm. cornerbacks you were facing this week were not physical press corners. Yep. Outside of Lamar Jackson, there were not a lot of guys who could really challenge you at the line of scrimmage. And even Lamar struggled. And Lamar, was, and Lamar is a hit or miss, a, a very home run. The Nebraska cornerback is a very home run sort of hitter at the line of scrimmage, not nearly as good in press coverage as some of the top cornerbacks in this class or what you'll be seeing in the NFL. So I still have question marks about that. But, man, he was so crisp along his routes down the football field that that's why he gets north to our top 100. Yeah, I went back and watched more of him. I mean, there was a handful of reps where, like, again, the, the, the inconsistency confuses me, though, because this guy looks uh -huh. like a guy who can separate on every route, but there are times where he, this guy just doesn't. I think I want to watch more of his tape also, and try to find Also, another guy, there. just the production wasn't there and on the old, that old mm -hmm. side of things, so those are always – going to be little concerns. Obviously, Florida quarterback situation there is going to limit your production. Yep. So. All right, last riser here. I mean, the cornerback group was terrible at mm -hmm. the Senior Bowl. There's a reason why there's a bunch of receivers on this list that are rising. I mean, in, in addition <laughs> to them playing well, these cornerbacks didn't look all that great. Yes. But there, there was one cornerback that was consistent and played well all week long. It was Troy Pride Jr. Yeah. of Notre Dame. And even before the practices start, we talked to this guy. And we know he could stick with anyone. He's a former mm -hmm. track star. wants to run in the 4-2s. But what I was really impressed with, he, he diagnosed his weaknesses without even telling him. He's like, hey, 
I need to get better at the line of scrimmage. I need to get better finishing at the catch point. He did both of those things so well yeah. in the senior bowl. Really won a ton of one-on-ones. When you, in situations he probably shouldn't have. Yeah, he had a 50% win rate on the week in the one-on-ones, which is pretty, pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Against air, for a cornerback against a wide receiver. You look at some of the other guys in this list. Michael Ojemudi had 11% win rate. Lamar Jackson, 7%. He's saying Bassey only 18%. Like some of these guys were getting torched. Mm-hmm. Half his reps is very good for him. His speed, he's just completely unafraid of getting beaten down the field. Like he knows, you get a step on me, I'm getting that step back. Like unless you're Tyreek Hill, uh, I'm going to be able to make, I have track speed. And so mm-hmm. it allows him to sort of sit on a lot of the stuff underneath. Uh, and he was just on another level from the rest of the cornerbacks there. Yeah. So I think from that perspective, it's definitely going to help him uh, just in, you know, in the scout's eyes. Like you, you can only compare a guy, a lot of times you can only compare a guy to what you're also seeing when 10 guys go in a row mm-hmm. in these one-on-one reps and one looks vastly different from the rest. It's definitely going to help his draft stock, pushed his way well up our boards, came into the week in the 90s. Now he checks in at 73 on our board, definitely a day two firmly a day two prospect. This I've got a little comp for you. I, don't, I think you might hate it, but I, I kind of like a comp. Here's my player comp for Troy Pride Jr., Adoree Jackson. I don't mind that. I think Adoree Jackson, yeah. similar speed, I mean, similar confidence, too. Like, Adoree Jackson knows he's not going to lose, yeah. you know, he's not going to lose steps, but I think where Adoree Jackson is trying to get better are the same two places that Troy Pride are also yeah, trying to get better. So, yeah. there I'm at with that. Throwing random comps at you. How do you feel? Just, Let's go to the, the followers at the Senior mm-hmm. Bowl. That's going to conclude our risers. But, I mean, there were a ton of other guys that had good performances in the interview process. I mean, Javon Kinlaw rocked it. He played really well on day one. Rocked the interview process. I thought mm-hmm. he was impressive. But let's get to some guys that maybe fell a little bit on our board. Starting with Juwan Jennings. You love this guy going in. You had him up there in the first round. I think 31st overall yep. on the big board before the Senior Bowl. But what did you see in the practices kind of dropped him? Was it the separation? I, I feel like that's where it really it, it was really just that lack of speed. Now, he could get off the line of scrimmage. He has that shake. He had no problem uh, with press at the line. He wasn't, you know, getting stuck and then having to shake it off later like some of the other guys, some of the other bigger wide receivers struggled with. He could get off the line of scrimmage, but then once he had a step on some guys down the football field, he couldn't continue to make that step up and make more ground. Uh, he had cornerbacks catch up, catching up to him on the, down the football field and then didn't. Uh, while he had one nice play day one in terms of jumping over a cornerback's back uh, and securing the football, he wasn't necessarily the most physical at the catch point continually tracking balls down the football field. So I, I just think he's limited to some degree at the next level. That's why you're going to drop down just a little bit. Like I said, goes from 31st on the board to 40th, still very high in him. Mm-hmm. His best trait or his best skill was never going to be showcased there mm-hmm. is after the catch ability. There's yeah. no after the catch And no one's ability. tackling after exactly. the catch there. <laughs> There's no one trying to bring him down afterwards. And so that's by far you know, his best trait. Uh, so still very high in him, but he's not. You just have to understand who he is. Might be, uh, might be a guy you use in the slot, a guy you pump screens to, that sort of thing for the next level, not your downfield threat. All right, another downer here is Washington Center. We talked about him a little bit, Nick Harris. Mm-hmm. I will say this, and you agree with this, is he was one of the most athletic, if not the most athletic He's offensive athletic. lineman yeah, there. Yeah. And, and I think you saw that in a handful of reps with his recovery. Like, he can recover really well. He, he, he did really well in the stunt drills and the mm-hmm. twist drills. But where he struggled were the one-on-ones, especially against bigger guys who were willing to bull rush him. Because when he got bull rushed, he really struggled to anchor and stay in front of his guy, or keep them from yeah. going in the quarterback's lap. And, and the thing is, like, he knows that – he had to know that his play strength is going to be an issue. Mm-hmm. That was an issue that we saw on tape in 2018. I thought it improved greatly in 2019. I thought it was a monstrous issue in 2018, so much so that I wasn't, like, uh, wasn't even in our top 100 uh, before this season. Uh, comes in, thought his play strength was much better this year, but it still wasn't you know, great, still wasn't among the top centers. You, know, you look at him versus Lloyd Cushenberry, and it's night and day mm-hmm. in terms of how strong those dudes are. Uh, but Nick Harris, I think the worst thing for me is he shows up at 290. Yeah. Like, he, he shows up probably 10 pounds under the sort of threshold you want for an offensive lineman. So he knows he's going to have play strength issues, then shows up light, and then gets bowled back in the quarterback's laps like again and again and again and again. That's just worrisome. Like the fact that he, he hasn't been uh, in the weight room uh, pumping iron the last two months, you know, since the season ending is a little concerning. That's probably what he is going to be doing for the next six months. The dude just needs to up his strength before he gets to the NFL season or else we're going to see a – uh, Garrett Bradbury-esque start to his career. Uh-oh. I'd say. That's not good. I mean, Garrett Bradbury was a <laughs> no, frequent I, flyer on the blackout segment during the, the early parts of the don't podcast. Don't need to hate on Bradbury again, but... I agree. Know, no, yeah. I agree with you. The same same concerns. All right, another offensive lineman that kind of fell down a bit was Kentucky guard Logan Stenberg, dubbed Mr. Nasty. I'll say this. In addition to kind of having a down week in the practices in the one-on-ones, interviewed him, he wasn't that nasty. Wasn't yeah. that mean. I wanted him to kind of punch me in the face. It would have rose up my board, but he was actually a very nice guy, and I, I think I, I was a little bit concerned from there. I was surprised at the least. Yeah, I, I thought we'd see just a little more physical of a presence in pass pro 
Uh, I, I thought he, I mean, he got bull rushed a, f a couple times. Uh, I thought he's, he plays a little high for a mm -hmm. guard. Uh, it was one of those things where you just didn't see him pass pro this lot, a lot this past year. Once Lynn Bowden came in, they didn't pass. When they did, it was a lot of you know play action, that sort of thing. So uh, I think there's still some concerns about how he'll hold up in pass protection. Now, he played left guard at Kentucky and took most of his snaps at right guard this past week in the one-on-ones, which is always kind of, it flips, you know, everything flips. It's not as easy as it looks, so that could have uh, been a big been a factor in that. But he drops down a little on our board, not a huge fall. He goes mm -hmm. from 57 to 77. Yep. All right, yeah, Logan Stenberg, man, Mr. Nasty. He kind of lost it this week. Mr. Soft. No, he's not soft. He's not soft, but I don't want him to kill me, but here we are. Uh, Josiah Coatney, the Ole Miss defensive interior, did not – did not play well. Yeah, I mean, he did not. He did not have a good, good one-on-one -on -one opportunity. I mean, he wasn't good in the one-on-ones. Yeah. I mean, when you don't win on one-on-ones consistently, that's where the money is made. And so that's the thing. I thought you would see a guy. He, he, I thought he could have had a breakout week because he played a lot of nose tackle at Ole Miss, nose tackle and four technique. So he was head up on centers or head up on tackles. Mm -hmm. And I thought his best position was three technique at the next level. And he has one of the best first steps in his class. His athleticism shows up on tape. He was chasing quarterbacks down outside the pocket this past year. You don't see that from a lot of 300, you know, 20 pound defensive tackles. I thought he had uh, some, some great juice to him, but then he shows up, gets to play three technique, and just doesn't have any plans to yeah. pass rusher. Like there was a reason why his pass rusher grade has suffered over the course of his career, despite all that athleticism. And yes, he still still is very athletic and still showed it at times, but I don't I don't think he is any anywhere close as a pass rusher. And for that reason, he goes from 88th on our board to falling all the way out of the top 100. Yep, you hate to see that. All right, Jared Pinkney, talk about a guy who's falling out of your top 100. Tough. Man, he did not play well at the Senior Bowl. He did not have a good 2019 season. Mm -hmm. 2018 feels like a long time ago at this point. I mean, he's a guy that you know had had. Really, really good 2018 mm -hmm. season where you turn on the tape. This guy's athletic. This guy can make you know make moves down the football field, but really struggled to separate in Mobile. Has not really shown up, risen to the occasion after a good 2018. Yeah, and he just the biggest thing was him on any sort of vertical route did not have separation. Mm -hmm. Did not have any sort of second gear. Uh, I, I thought going back to 2018, he was kind of a four seven flat mm -hmm. sort of forty guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he runs in the four eights now. He just like has Yikes. not the speed. It is a massive concern. It's one of those things where you don't see a guy, you don't see a tight end uh, get manned up a lot uh, at the college level. You, you don't see a guy versus press coverage. You don't see him versus man-to-man uh, -man coverage a lot. You saw that here. Saw him try to go downfield against linebackers, and on the, the whole week basically just did not get open. Yeah. So that, that at that point, uh, I'm hand up, made my mistake, Four third <laughs> was way too high. He mm -hmm. moves all the way out of our top 100. I mean, he fringe. Top hundred, probably like if it went ten more guys, he'd be on the list. But yeah, I, I think you made you made you made a good point there. I think people say like, how does he fall that far after the Senior Bowl? You do not get an opportunity to see tight ends, specifically mm -hmm. tight ends, running backs, and even some wide receivers like KJ Hill go against press man or man coverages until the Senior Bowl. And then when yeah. you do, I mean, it it stands out like a sore thumb if mm -hmm. you're good or you're bad. Yep. And I think Jared Pinkney stood out for the wrong reasons. Couldn't create separation against some an unathletic group. I mean, not a great group of linebackers and safeties. Yeah. So uh, a concern for Pinkney. He falls out of the top 100. Uh, I, I don't think he had a worse week though than this next guy. Wake Forest cornerback Isang Bassi weighed in very small. I think it was what five foot nine, hundred and something pounds. Small hands. Got like what seven inch hands. Seven and seven eighths inch hands. I've never seen sub eight. Sub eights. I haven't either. I That's remember. insane. Yeah. That's insane. Well, he's saying Bassey, though, he's going to play. He's already he, Going into this week, we knew. Limited role at the next level. Slot with some zone cover, heavy zone coverage and those things. Yeah. He played a ton of press man this week, and it looked like he's never going to play that at the next level. He really struggled. Exactly. It was just basically like, take him off your board if you play man coverage. Like, okay. yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You have to play zone. You have to maybe move him to safety, like, and you're limiting him so much in that regard. Uh, like, I thought he could be just a, a full-time slot sort of guy and stay up there, but as soon as Anyone got it because he's aggressive. Body. I wouldn't yeah. say he was soft. He's aggressive, but the problem is he could not stick with guys. Just and as soon as anyone got into his body, he was just off balance and mm -hmm. was falling all over himself and was just not even just losing. Was like guys twenty yards down the field and he's flat on his face. You, yeah, you know, it was last scrimmage. So it was that bad first day. Easy. KJ Hill rep or yeah. Michael Pittman, I think it was what mm -hmm. it was. Oh man, he did not Hit. look good. He stood out like a sore thumb yeah. again, similar to Pinkney, just getting toasted. Him and Lamar Jackson, lowest grade we've ever given to corners and the one on ones. You know, man. in our I think five years, four years of doing this now, grading the one on ones, so bad. Insane. All right, let's go to uh, Penn State's Robert Windsor. I I, I think. Active hands, I think you saw the energy, you saw those things, but, I mean, it wasn't leading to a ton of pass rush wins, and in the one-on-ones, that showed. That's the thing, is he only 33% win rate on the week. And this was, with his quickness and his already, what I thought I saw on tape in terms of pass rushing skill set, uh, 
this should be a situation where he shines. Like mm -hmm. an undersized defensive tackle shouldn't murder in one on ones uh, at the Senior Bowl because you yeah. got a two way go. Like it's just you and a guard on an island. You're not going to usually in games have a two way go uh, when you're a quicker, undersized sort of guy. With that two way go, it's very difficult on guards, and he did not show it whatsoever. So that that was unfortunate. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought he could have been a guy who maybe not a, a every down player, but on your third down packages, offer something. Was in the top hundred before this. He gone now. Yep. All righty. Let's keep going uh, to now. Let's move to the quarterbacks. That's going to do it for our risers and fallers. Uh, looking forward to talking on these quarterbacks. There was so we're not going to bring up Stephen Montez and Shea Patterson. Both didn't we have great weeks did. in the Senior Bowl. We, we, yeah, we did. No. But again, these guys don't really have. We're going to talk about the. The prospects. The prospects. Yeah. The actual prospects that will go in the 2020 NFL Draft. But before we do that, got to give a shout out to our sponsors, Proper Cloth. Proper Cloth, not wearing them now, but I know you get good use of, out of them on the weekend. Talk to me about the compliments mm. you're getting for your Proper Cloth. Well, they fit really well. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they fit really well, and all you have to do is just type in. Uh, you don't even have to go and measure yourself. If you do go and measure yourself, yes, it fits better. But all you have to do is basically just type in, here's what I wear in a number of different shirts. Here's how my pants size. Mm -hmm. Here's this. Here's that. And it showed up to my door, and it fit like a glove. And it's difficult to find off-the-rack shirts, dress shirts that fit well. And so that's why Proper Cloth, the shirts that they sent me have been uh, mm -hmm. my go-to. So I mean, the fit is fantastic. The feel is great. And I, I think you spoke to it. But, I mean, it's so nice that you're able to do it all online. And they always say 100% mm -hmm. guarantee. If it doesn't fit, send it back. And they have people in the United States that will send that back pretty quickly. So they want to continue to work until it fits perfectly. And the styles are great. You can get a little custom cuff, your initials on there. I know you're getting excited. But, uh, yeah, Proper Cloth, fantastic. You can go to proper uh, propercloth.com, get your shirt today. Use promo code PFF for $20 off your first shirt. But, yeah, big shout-out to Proper Cloth. Let's dive into these quarters. Quarterbacks, proper quarterbacks here. Uh, start with Justin Herbert. I think everyone knows he had a great week at the Senior Bowl, but the reason he didn't move up on PFF's board is because we knew he was going to have a big week at the Senior Bowl. This is where Justin Herbert would thrive, on air, against this type of competition. Yeah. He had a good week, but it was as expected. Not a, not a board mover with the week he had. Yeah, his pluses are, were, I mean, in the draft guy heading, is his pluses were uh, downfield accuracy, arm strength. Mm -hmm. He showed downfield accuracy and arm strength. It's like, oh, you can't double count it at that yeah, point. Yeah, you true. can't be, I can't be in awe. Oh, wow, I really thought that now. <laughs> it's like, we knew that. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the things that he couldn't prove were his decision-making with the football, uh, being able to read defenses and find good opportunities with the ball down the football field, uh, and what he does when he faces uh, complex defenses, better defense at the college level uh, in terms of just winning, playing winning football. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, the, that's just what's been uh, haunting him over the course of his career, why he's not – uh, and the fact that he's disappeared in a lot of those games, uh, and that was never going to happen here. They play only cover one and cover three. You're not disguising any coverages. You know what's going to happen. Uh, and so I do think that he was always going to look good in, those, in the, the drills against air. That was always going to be, if, if you were going to mm -hmm. double count that, that's on you. That, that's, uh, that's just, I don't, I don't think that's good process. And so he was 27th on our board before this, 27th after. Yep. Uh, with Justin Herbert, too, was, you know, we talked to Daniel Jeremiah a little bit. He came out with his latest top 50. He has Jordan Love above Justin Herbert mm -hmm. on his latest top 50. I talked to some other guys at The Athletic. They're saying, I'd be more willing to take a flyer on Love than Herbert at this point, knowing the weaknesses you spoke to, the concerns mm -hmm. in those big games. I know Jordan Love's still behind Justin Herbert on our latest big board, but how close <coughs> are those two prospects for you? Because some see it as night and day. Others see Jordan Love kind of taking over. I, I don't think it's that. I, I still have Herbert well above because mm – -hmm. The biggest thing for me is, uh, so Herbert had a much better offensive line, much better sort of situation around him, but I don't think the offense was a downfield passing offense. So when I say like he didn't find a lot of, uh, wasn't taking good shots down the football field, it wasn't necessarily an offense that was designed to you know, continuously pump the ball down the football field, and I think that's what he needs. He, he needs, uh, he, like we talked with Seth Galina about how he needs like an offense that gets vertical uh, to play to his strengths, uh, very similar to what, uh, you know, Ryan Tannehill sort of ran this past year with Tennessee Titans, mm -hmm. a lot of play action. And then you got two guys you're looking at down the football field immediately. That's your first read is those guys on the football field. I think he needs more of that, less of this swing pass, sort of what he ran at Oregon. So I think in that sort of offense, I can still see a pass to success. Jordan Love, decision-making, can you fix that? The mm -hmm. inconsistency, can you teach a guy to be consistent? I don't know. That's why I'm lower on Love. All right, yeah. And, and Jordan Love, I mean, talk to me about his senior bowl performance. I mean, what yeah. did you see during the week? What did you see on air? And then also what did you see in, in, the, in the drills where they're going on team and stuff? And I think it was just inconsistency again. And, yeah. And he had a lot of – The accuracy the, the on the first two days was rough. Yeah, and he had the most big-time throws on the football field of anyone there in, in the week of practice. He made the special throws. That's never been a concern with him is the special throws. It's can you consistently hit the easy ones. 
can he consistently uh, not throw a ball to safety uh, up the seam? And it's, those things were still happening on his tape. And so uh, he could have proven, he had more to gain in my eyes mm -hmm. than Justin Herbert. He could have proven, hey, uh, the situation was why I sucked this year. But, uh, and it still was why he sucked this year, but it mm -hmm. was uh, some of it and a good part of it was still on him, and it's still on him at the senior bowl this week. And, and you speak to good process for evaluating prospects. When you, when you highlight a concern for a quarterback or any player that goes to the senior bowl, and then you see it kind of exclamation point of that concern at mm -hmm. the senior bowl, that's, that's, that's a big no-no. Maybe not necessarily a board mover, you're not going to drop him down for that, but it, he had an opportunity to avoid those concerns, and like you said, didn't do that. All right, let's go to Anthony Gordon. A lot of people are talking high on this kid. After, after a good week at the senior bowl, accurate with the football decision-making, mm -hmm. showed up in the game itself. Self. Anthony Gordon looking at like this day three darling in yeah. the 2020 NFL draft. I, I liked what I saw. I, I mean, I thought he moved up, not super accurate, but I, I think uh, as a gamer and what he showed actually in the game was fantastic. I, I love his throwing mechanics. I love his quick release. Uh, I, I think his accuracy is good. And I think as much as uh, he had games where it just all fell apart, uh, he only had one season as a starter. And it, Kind of like for Herbert, it's been multiple years of a guy falling apart. With Anthony Gordon, this was you know his first time he sees a real defense, and it just the wheels came off against Utah. But I think down the stretch, he played some better football. So uh, didn't quite make our top hundred, but he'd be right outside uh, if we did go to about one ten. I felt bad for this kid a little bit in the interview process. Every single person brought up Gardner Minshew. Gardner this guy Minshew. could not get a, get living avoid him. Shadow, and he's yeah. living in Minshew's shadow. He needs to prove. Are we, aren't we all living in? Minshew's we are. Shadow we kind of are. That's a good point. Great, Anthony Gordon. We're all one of the same here. All right, last <laughs> quarterback we want to touch on a little bit. Uh, Jalen Hurts had a big yeah. following down there in Mobile. A lot of lot of praise. He wore the two sided helmet, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. However, I, I, I didn't necessarily think he had a good week. I mean, there were times where he missed throws. I mean, it was on the Jordan Love levels of inaccuracy on some days. Yeah. I mean, again, a lot of the concerns that we saw going into this week. Just all, kind of, yeah, all over the place down the football field. And you can't, uh, as much as we've said, hey, the path to a, he has past success in the NFL. Uh, run heavy, basically the Tyrod Taylor blueprint with Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Use him in the option game. Uh, use a lot of play action. Get him going down the field where he makes good decisions in terms of not putting the ball in harm's way down the field, but his accuracy down the field is a big concern. Mm -hmm. And it still was in this. He would throw, he would just, you know, goal balls, uh, five yards, five yards to the sideline and five yards too deep. Like they were just all over the place in terms of where that ball was going. And so that, that's going, like I said, that's going to be his offense. He's going to have to be able to attack down the football field. Those play action, those run heavy looks will suck people up. You have mm -hmm. to be able to take advantage over the top to beat that. I don't think he's even on Tyron Taylor's level in terms of accuracy down the field at this point. And another thing you didn't bring up, but I remember you mentioned this, so it's the miscommunication. Yeah, he, he had, of so all the quarterbacks, he had so the most weird. miscommunication with the receivers. It was weird. It, it was really was weird. like why consistently throwing why the wrong is he route. throwing the wrong route. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was interesting. <laughs> Hard to blame the receivers on that one. But that's going to do it for kind of our Senior Bowl wrap-up podcast. This has been uh, Austin Gale and Mike Renner from 2 for 1 Drafts. Remember, you can find us on Spotify, uh, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. But again, Austin Gale, Mike Renner, 2 for 1 Drafts. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.